Now it's my honor to introduce our third and final keynote before we move to the panel discussion, and that is Michael Koch, who is the head of intellectual property at Syngenta. Uh, Michael started his career in pharmaceutical research before he moved to agriculture and focused on intellectual property uh, law and policy. Um, he is um, leading the IP team here at Syngenta with a lot of visionary ideas, I must say. And he also sits on the advisory committee of several industry association bodies and is a qualified European and Swiss patent attorney. So thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Christine. Speak in your microphone. Yes, thank you, everybody. I want to look with you today into the question whether intellectual property, whether IP is an enabler or what you hear increasingly often a disabler of innovation in critical areas like agriculture. Agriculture and food security is facing tremendous challenges. We have to increase agricultural productivity by more than 50% until 2050. In addition, climate change is making many of today's high-performing varieties fail. We have to deliver on that challenge with less with less fuel, less land, less water, and other inputs. More with less is required. This will require a revolution of innovation and faster innovation life cycles. We have to maximize and integrate innovations from many areas. Seed, biotechnology, crop protection, storage, transportation, information technology, and financial systems. It will only be possible to deliver on that if we really integrate a lot of innovations. What people agree with is the need for more innovation. Where people disagree is what is the role of intellectual property in this context. It is clear that IP as such does not feed the world. Breeding progress and innovation feeds the world. It is also clear that especially new plant varieties are not created in empty space, but are always based on existing plants. Access to genetic diversity and innovation is key. But it is also key that it might be a short-term solution to abandon IP to foster access to innovation. That is like killing the goose which lays a golden egg. Today's innovation may become accessible, but tomorrow's may lack incentive. Another property of the IP system is often forgotten, the requirement to disclose the innovation, to share the knowledge and enable other innovators to learn and improve. Without IP, innovators may often lose secrets as a last resort which may hamper, actually, knowledge sharing. Modern plants today are high-tech products in an easy-to-copy form. We often have a very romantic view about what breeding really is. Seeing the farmer picking the next generation of varieties by going in his field. This is largely incorrect. Breeding today is really high technology. The progress in breeding technologies in over the last 20 years is enormous. Even in Europe, most plants are high technology, built on technologies like hybridization, market-assisted breeding, trade-related research, and genomics. The development of these technologies is lengthy, expensive, and risky. It can take 8 to 10 years to develop a new trade and many millions of euros. On the other hand, once made, these plants are easy to copy, simply by propagation, by other breeders, farmers, even home gardeners. Without some kind of IP system, there might be a diminished incentive to invest and to take risk. The debate around agriculture IP is like an arm wrestling today. We have one side which is asking for more IP, more protection, to have more incentive for more innovation. And we have another side which is asking for more access to have shorter innovation life cycles. And both sides are right. 
The question is, can we develop the currently confrontational debate into a more cooperative dialogue? This is about dilemma flipping. People today look on the problem from their own perspective and interest. That's why one side sees a duck and the other sees a rabbit, which seems to be impossible to align. The question is, can we have both? Can we have more incentive for innovation and more access? I believe, yes, we can. IP eventually is a tool, an instrument provided by society to foster innovation. The tool as such is neither good nor bad. It is the use of the tool which is good or bad, which is destructive or constructive. The negative perception of IP is largely based on its use to exclude others and to limit access to innovation. Can we step away from that and find other ways to use intellectual property? Many believe that the IP system of today is broken. And again, for different reasons. There are proponents of the IP system which see the multiple signals of erosion and fear about the incentive for future innovation. And there are the critics of the IP system which see that IP as an exclusion tool is not fit for the challenges of the future. And again, both are right. Without doubt, there are cracks in the system. But as you cannot repair a broken egg, I believe that we cannot turn back the clock on IP and reinstitute the status quo. Why can't we turn back the clock on IP? Because our environment is changing. The world is moving increasingly rapidly into an open society where collaboration and integration becomes important. In a world where open innovation and open collaboration gains important, the use of IP to exclude others from the access to innovation and technology seems like a relic. While the agricultural industry is somewhat limping behind other industries with respect to integration, the need for integration of innovations is unquestionable. Modern varieties need innovation from many areas. We need to have resistance against diseases and against drought. We need to have better nutritional value and yield. And nobody, not even the large multinational companies, owns all of the element. If the environment is changing, its inhabitants and nature need to evolve and adapt. The same is true for the innovation environment. If our innovation landscape and innovation environment is changing, IP and IP users need to evolve and adapt. Like a mammoth, the use of IP to exclude others was a fundamental driver of the economy in the past, a past where innovation was largely driven by individuals and individual companies. Today, innovation is increasingly driven by collaboration and integration. If we do not evolve our IP use, IP may become extinct. Even the strongest, if he does not adapt and evolve, becomes extinct in a changing environment. If we do not evolve IP use and step away from the exclusion, eventually the entire IP system may lose its societal trust and die. The broken egg stands for a crisis which cannot be fixed with makeshift repair. It leaves us with two choices. We can continue to struggle and complain, and nothing will change and eventually the broken egg becomes rotten. Or we turn the open egg into an omelette. We accept the need for change 
and collaboratively find creative solution for our challenge. How can this solution look like? It was Charles Darwin who said, it's not the strongest who will survive in a changing environment, and not the most intelligent, but the one who is most responsive to change. Why changing the law and legislation of IP, especially in a global context, is very cumbersome and lengthy, there is nothing which can preclude us as IP users to change our use of IP. We in Syngenta have started two initiatives which take a different approach how we license our intellectual property in seeds. Both following the principles of free access, but not access for free. The first is the e-licensing initiative which we are launching today, where we make available at fair, reasonable and transparent and non-discriminatory conditions IP both in the vegetable area, but also in bio biotechnology enabling. It is like an electronic shopping mall, as you know it from Amazon or iTunes, where you can simply get access to technologies. We invite you to visit our booth here in the venue later on if you want to learn more about it. The other initiative is even broader. Here we have with other players, small companies, medium companies, patent owners, but also technology recipients, developed a proposal for an industry licensing platform for vegetables, where you can not only get access to Syngenta's technology, but also to many third parties' technology. This proposal has been submitted to the European Commission before Christmas for review. To ensure that these initiatives are not singular events, but the beginning of a larger journey of change will not be easy. There are no textbooks, no experience how to do that in the agricultural area, which is to a certain degree special, with a lot of different constraints and paradigms. But as Shafali said, we need to jump into the unknown. Or to say it with one of my other heroes, we need to boldly go where no man has gone before. To go on such journey will not be easy. It will require the leadership skill of rapid prototyping. We need to learn, adjust rapidly. It will, above all, require mutual trust and courage and support from political and other stakeholders. I say, let's go on that journey, or with Captain Kirk, engage. Thank you. <laughs>